Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, lover of cosmetics, cosmetic consumer, if you will. And I haven't done one of these in a minute, but today we're doing a favorite empties and hate it, where I talk about the products that I really enjoy, the products that I've actually managed to empty, which there's quite a few, because I haven't done one of these in forever, and the products that just did not make the cut. I'm gonna get started first with empties, just because there's a lot of them. First things first, I've been going through hydrators like crazy, just, you know, it's summer and then starting Tret and all this stuff. I really love a mist, and I've actually gone through a couple of mists in the last few months. One of them is the one I actually bought in Korea. This is from a brand called BOH and it's their Panthenol Sika Calming 90% Calming Mist. This is supposed to be a Panthenol Centella Mist. And truthfully, was this hydrating? Yes. Did I enjoy it? Yes. But it just wasn't as richly hydrating as I want. There's just more I want out of a Panthenol product. At least it didn't give me. So did I like it? Yes. Am I going to get it again? I don't think so. This one is from Haru Haru. It is their Black Bamboo Mist. And it's just a hydrating mist. It's supposed to be a little bit soothing as well. I like this and you get a lot of product, I think for a very decent price. So I might repurchase this, but fundamentally it also didn't do the most for me just because it was so lightweight. From Isle of Paradise, I have their Dark Glow Self Tanning Mousse. This isn't like 100% empty, but realistically this is not enough to tan my body. I've been self tanning like crazy. I mean, I don't know if you can tell right now, I am bronze. This is really nice. This is not cheap, cheap though, but this is their clear one. So it goes on clear. There's no bronze residue on you that just wipes off, which is a big pet peeve of mine with self tanner. This develops within four to six hours. I like the color this gives me. It's a really nice warm color and this does develop really nicely and it smells really good. That being being said, you'll see one of my favorites. I have another alternative that I've really been enjoying that's more affordable, but this isn't bad at all. I really like this one. And clearly I've gone through, I think two bottles of this now in the last six months. Another mist, this is from Dr. Jart. This is their facial calming mist. I bought this in Korea when I was at the Dr. Jart store. I bought five of these, so I got backups. But this is really nice. It's super lightweight. This is very soothing. So it fits nicely with all my other Stick Pair products, which if you're not aware, the Dr. Jart Stick Pair line is my favorite thing in the world. This doesn't smell like anything and it's super lightweight. And if you use this, the mist isn't just like a, it's like a so the mist is a very wide range. And so like a quick little gets your whole face and it's lightweight, which again, I like, but I would like something more rich but because this is so soothing. I'm gonna give it a pass. And again, I have like four other bottles of these. So I already got backups and I will probably buy more when I go back to Korea. You know what? I got a lot of cleansers because when I moved to this apartment in Germany, we didn't have hand soap. We had a lot of cleansers, some of which I just got in PR and we didn't love for the face. So we repurposed them as hand wash. But that being said, let's talk about them. Number one I have is from Otsi. Otsi was, if I understand, correctly, a Korean brand that was sold through Mimi Box. I recently actually, I found out today because I was going to talk about another serum from them for other content that the brand shut down. So you can't get any Ulti products. This is their Crystal Nova Makeup Removing Cleanser. This is actually really nice. We started using this as hand wash and then I started using it as face wash because I like the texture of it. I like the smell of it. The smell delicious. It smells like melon to me, but oh my God, this is such a nice cleanser. So lightweight, really nice foam to it. So I'm actually really sad that this brand no longer exists. This has a little bit in there though. So I might just add water to it and dilute it and keep using it. But it's like to the point where I can't actually reach it with the tube in there. So I might have to do that. I finished one of my Holy Grail cleansers. This is from Inky List or Salicylic Acid Cleanser. I already got backups of this. I'm going through the jumbo one right now. The reason I go through these so quickly is because I use this as like a head to toe situation as shampoo, as face wash and target it on my body wherever I need it. So I go through these very quickly. I wish these foamed a little bit better, but something I've noticed with salicylic acid based cleansers is that they don't always foam the greatest. So I attribute that maybe to salicylic acid as an ingredient itself but I already got backups and I will keep using this. This is from Trader Joe's Skincare. My very best friends in Seattle sent me a box with some Trader Joe's Skincare in there. And this is the first thing I cracked open, I guess. This was okay. This was a little bit too thin for me, like too watery. So it just, I didn't love this for the face. I imagine this is very cheap though, which is a benefit. But would I repurchase this myself? No, not really. Just cause it didn't do a lot for me. It was too thin. It didn't feel very luxe in my opinion. Like the Otsi one had a nice body to it. It foamed nicely. It was a nice rich lather. This, the foam for this was very thin and like watery. It was very weak. This I got in PR from Aven. This is their Cleanance Gel Cleanser. I didn't love this either. This was perfumed like nobody's business, which I didn't love. And then the foam did feel a little bit stripping. That being said, this specific line is intended for, if I'm not mistaken, for acne prone skin, oily acne prone skin. So I understand the intention behind it. It just wasn't my favorite. And this kind of goes in that French pharmacy brand of like, it's very perfumed. It's kind of an old school mentality around skincare. When I look at who the newer brands are, they're using different surfactant systems. They're using different surfactants 
surfactants that aid in maybe richer foam and a thicker texture to the cleanser. So I didn't love this, I'm gonna be honest. And I'm not gonna repurchase, even though I got it in PR. An oil cleanser I went through very quickly. This is from Beauty of Joseon. It's their ginseng cleansing oil. The brand themselves gave this to me in PR before it launched while I was in Korea. And we're now like three months later and it's already empty. I've already started a second one. I'm like halfway through it. And to me, this is just a very straight to the point oil cleanser. It doesn't have a smell. The texture of it is really nice, but it rinses off very clean in my opinion. I already got backups of this because again, I got this in PR from the brand, but then I also got it in PR from retailers like YesStyle and Style Korean. But realistically, it's just a straight to the point oil cleanser. It works well at what it needs to do. It's very simple. There's not a lot of bells and whistles. And I always like to have a product like that. I technically do prefer balm cleansers or like the Crave Beauty, that gel cleanser. I love those kind of cleansers, but it's always useful to have ones like these around because if you're not using them for your face, I like to use these textures specifically for the hair as well or to help clean my makeup brushes. From Pattern Beauty, this is their leave-in conditioner. I love this stuff. I don't actually condition in the shower. I shampoo in the shower and then when I come out, I'll do some like hair treatments and then I'll put this on top. I love this, the way it feels, the way it smells. It deep conditions nicely without being too heavy and making my hair greasy in like two days. So this is really nice. One thing is I don't love the packaging because sometimes I feel like you open it and the product's already seeping out without even squeezing the bottle. So that is one issue. This I purchased myself. I actually purchased a mini of it too that I'm going through, but I do love this and I would repurchase if I needed it, but I can't get it here in Germany. Floss, this is Coco Floss, which my boyfriend bought because a lot of dentists talk about this on TikTok as like a really expensive, but really high quality floss. And truthfully, I mean like it's floss, like how high quality could it be? What I think is the fact that this has a specific texture to the floss itself that makes it kind of grippy and not grippy in the sense that like the way rubber is grippy, but grippy in the sense that when it goes between your teeth, I feel like it's doing a better job of cleaning. These are in shape, these are like a good amount of dollars per thing. And we already have like four backups. So this is nice. Realistically, do I think this is worth it? I don't really know. But if dental professionals are saying that this is definitely worth it, I would listen to that. But I already got backup, so I'm not too pressed about getting more. This serum from Common Labs, this is their vitamin B5 moisture ampule. Vitamin B5 is panthenol, which if you don't remember, I mentioned panthenol in that mist I mentioned first. This to me now has set the bar for what a panthenol serum is in terms of how it hydrates the skin, how it feels on the skin. Panthenol is a great humectant. It helps support the moisture barrier. It also has some soothing benefits to it. This got me hooked on panthenol. I want a high percentage panthenol product all the time. It's because it's so richly hydrating, but not heavy and like suffocating on the skin. The only caveat to this is that this has a like fresh linen cotton laundry smell to it, which there's a time and a place. I don't love that all the time, but it does smell bad. I like the sensory behind it. So if you are sensitive to fragrance, just note that. But I love this product. I want more of this and I want other products like this. So now I'm on the hunt for similar products that have a high panthenol content. This has 10.8%. My eyes are now set on Pareto. They have a panthenol cream, like a gel cream. So I'm gonna try that and see how it compares to this in terms of the effect on the skin, but I want like 70 more of these. And last from Key Soul Care, this is their Reviving Aura Mist. This is covered in something oily and I don't know what that's from. Probably the oil cleanser. This is also something that to me, I set the bar for rose mist and toners. This richly hydrates in a way that it's hard to find for me because there's something to it that it feels like a spray version of the Claire's Double Preparation Toner, but it's a rose mist. It just has extra humectants in it. And my thing with rose is rose scented products can get real cheap to me real fast. And most of the times they don't do a lot for the skin. You're really just kind of paying for that like rose effect, but there's never really a lot of benefits behind it. This has a rose toner smell that smells delicious. And then on the skin, it's also just richly hydrates. This has a lot of other humectants in it that just, it's a really good toner. I really enjoy this. I just spray this liberally from like head to chest and then I'll seal it in with a nice light moisturizer. But also on top of makeup, this is really nice. I like to spray it around the perimeter of my face so that it just gets that part really nice dewy radiant look without it being like too heavy and too greasy. So this is really nice. I want to get more, but I'm also on the hunt for products similar to this now. So that was empties and there was a lot, but again, I haven't done one of these in a minute. So let's talk about Hate It's real quick and I don't have a lot. And my thing with Hate It's is that there's very rarely such thing as an actual bad skincare product. Most of the time, it's just the product is not intended for me, but it could be a really good product for someone else. For example, there's something like too richly moisturizing, a little bit too greasy for my oily skin. Doesn't mean it's not a good product for dry skin. But that being said, the few products that I didn't enjoy are actually sunscreens. And the number one one I have is from Abib. And this is their Comfort Sunblock. I bought this really optimistic, but without looking into the product. And I don't know why I assumed, oh, it's gonna be like a regular run of the mill gel cream chemical sunscreen. It's not chemical, it's mineral. So like I took this, I swiped it on, cast immediate. It was pasty, it was thick. I didn't even actually finish the full application footage. It half my face and I was like, oh, this is not it. So that, that was my own bad. This is basically a chemical sunscreen with a really pronounced tone up effect, which that fundamentally for me is a, who is using this and why are you using it? But I do know there is an audience for tone up sunscreens, but for me, I did 
not like it. Another one I have is from a brand called Hello Sunday, and I have all of their sunscreens. They sent it to me in PR. And this is their matte one, which I was very optimistic about. My issue with this is the fact that it is matte in the way that you rub it like once or twice and it's already starting to set down. So you don't get a lot of slip with it. And the last time I used it, I had on self tanner and I like swiped twice and it literally like just peeled the self tanner off my face. It's also kind of grainy and I don't know why. Does it leave me matte though? Kind of, and it preps nicely for makeup. But the thing is, especially with the mattifiers in this, this will have a cast on deeper skin as well. So I'm just like, this is really specific to a very certain population of people. I think they could have formulated this a little bit different to get that matte effect. That's just me, but it wasn't a favorite. And then one more I didn't like also from Hello Sunday. This is their, the one that makes you glow, which I was really hyped about because it's their dark spot serum. So you see serum and you're like a serum that's SPF 40. And I was like, what? And the dark spot part is the fact that it has hexyl resorcinol in there, which helps fade the appearance of pigmentation. Using this though, this is an oil. This is definitely not a very elegant feeling. And especially if you put on the amount that you're supposed to of this, you just feel like an oily, greasy mess. So it's just, it's not the vibe. What I'm getting from Hello Sunday though, is very much in vain of what Supergoop does, where you have like SPF and a bunch of different products. So maybe this is something you can pair under like an actual sunscreen if you're maybe targeting pigmentation specifically, because you get a serum that targets that with a little bit of an SPF boost. But no, especially if you have oily skin, like the way this feels on the skin, it's just like a sensory nightmare. You just feel nasty and oily. You might as well just pour a whole bottle of canola oil on your face. Another one is from Misha. This is their waterproof sun milk. Misha recently reformulated all of their sunscreens, primarily because they switched from using an outside manufacturer to doing everything in-house now. So all Misha products are made under that Misha umbrella. And with reformulating their sunscreens, they added mineral filters to a lot of them, or they added Tinosorb M. So fundamentally, a lot of them now have casts. This is their waterproof. And this one has titanium dioxide very high up on the ingredients list. And this has a white cast, which is unfortunate because this has like a fairly matte finish to it. And it's waterproof, but it's just, it's gonna have a cast. This clung to my facial hair and my hairline so bad. I was not a fan. And then last is a cleanser. This is from Face Theory. I have two more, sorry. I have two more. This is a cleanser from Face Theory. This is their Restore Soft Waterproof Makeup Remover. Seeing that, I assumed, oh, it's gonna be like an oil cleanser, especially because it's like in a pump bottle. This is basically a cream cleanser, like a non-foaming cream cleanser that stung the hell out of my eyes and is so hard to get off. This is one of those textures that you have to use a washcloth to remove. And I think they do technically say that, but I'm not a washcloth kind of person. I want a product like the Beauty of Jocelyn Oil Cleanser. I massage it, it melts down my makeup super easy, add water to emulsify it off really quickly and it rinses off really clean. This just is not that product. And it was really inelegant to use and it's really messy and it just was not a good sensory experience. And again, it like really stung my eyes and it's very, very rare that a cleanser will sting my eyes. Or like, I mean more so like getting in my eyes and like burning my eyes, not a good user experience. And the last product I have is also from Face Theory. And this product isn't bad. I think it probably does the function it needs to do just because. This is their Eloquate Serum. And I think fundamentally what this is, is that it is a hydrating serum that contains electrolytes that essentially are natural moisturizing factors. So like sodium PCA and calcium PCA are like the main marketing on this. This has zinc gluconate, sodium lactate, propane dial, has nice cinnamide in there as well. This is just so watery to me. And it feels like I'm just putting water on my face. Whereas I prefer a toner that has a little bit of body to it. Like you can feel like you put it on your face, like, oh, there's texture in this, which tells me there's like a good amount of humectants or whatever. And this has all the stuff that it's supposed to, like it has really good ingredients. It's, it feels like I'm putting water on my skin. And I don't, as a sensory thing, I don't like that. So this isn't bad, bad. I just, I didn't love it. I'm gonna keep using it though. Cause I mean, I assume it's doing what it needs to do. Being on trip, I'm gonna take all the hydration I can get, all the natural moisturizing factors, but I just, this leaves something to be desired. And now let's get on to my favorites. I got a lot and I have a lot of different product categories in this as well. So I'm gonna start with this from Garnier. This is their natural bronzer self tanner as I did for an empty. Like I've been really loving self tanner. This is their affordable option. I think I paid like maybe 10 euro for this at a store called DM here in Germany. But I mean, in the UK it's available at Boots for hella cheap too. And this is just really nice. It's very lightweight and it smells delicious. What I appreciate about this is that again, it's clear. So it's not gonna have like a weird bronze color that's gonna rub off on everything. And this sets down really nicely. When I apply this and like wait about an hour, I can like rub my skin and my skin feels very soft and not in any way like sticky or greasy or nasty, which I cannot stand when it comes to self tanner. So I really love this. And I think this might be like my favorite self tanner as of yet, especially because it's so cheap. I haven't used a lot of like, for example, the Sandro Prey products. I haven't used a lot more of the Isle of Paradise products. And I know for each of those brands, they have like a wide variety of self tanning options, but this like works for me and it's very affordable and it's easy to use. And I love the fact that it's clear. So a product category I've been exploring a lot frequently is hair care, particularly Asian brands. Most of these are gonna be Japanese, but I do have a Korean option in here. First one I have is from a brand called Elise, and this is a heat protectant. I bought this off Yes Style. And I like this because this kind of is like a hair treatment 
comb it too. I find that after I wash my hair and spray this in, I'll comb it through it. When I wake up the next morning, my hair is so soft. It is so nice and shiny. This has like a very, very, very light hold to it. And also this is a heat protectant. So when I style my hair afterwards with a hair dryer, my hair doesn't feel very dry. And I find like my split ends aren't as bad now after like a couple weeks. So this has been really enjoyable and this smells delicious. Love the smell of this. So this is one I might repurchase. This is from a brand, what brand is this? Tsubaki, I think. This is their hair milk. This is essentially like a hair serum. This feels really nice on the hair again. This, yeah, high key, this just feels like a really nice emulsion, like a skin essence. Also smells delicious. And so after I wash my hair out of the shower, this will be the first thing I put on just because it's a little bit more of a light emulsion, not so silicone heavy. So it feels nice and light in the hair. And when I say first thing, it's because I layer a few of these up. So that's the first thing I put on. Really nice hair treatment again. And it's really made my hair really manageable. I have very thick ethnic hair. And a lot of times it's only like instinct is just to like frizz up and like be very dry and big. And like my hair is so soft and it's all manageable now. So this combo has just been really working for me. So I'll go in with that first. Then afterwards I'll go in with this. This is from a brand called Curly Shill. This is their hair essence for daily care. It's supposed to be for moisturizing and shining. And this is a little bit more rich. This feels like a serum still, but kind of like a silicone based serum. And this, Oh, this also smells really good. This smells a little bit more planty, like herbally, but this still feels like a moisturizing essence. It just has a little bit more silicone in there. So that's starting to help to condition the hair, coat the hair so you get that nice, soft luster and shine. So that's my second step. I feel like it locks in some of the moisture from the first step. And then afterwards, or sometimes even in place of those, I'll go in with this. This is from Eliza Becca. This is their Ser 100 Collagen Coating Protein. This kind of feels like a light conditioner. Yeah, super lightweight. And this is essentially like, I guess, a protein treatment. I'm not entirely sure. Also smells nice. Uh, Oh my God, the smell for this is like very nostalgic for me, but I don't know what it is. It reminds me of my aunts in Puerto Rico, but this, if I'm not mistaken, has different hydrolyzed proteins in there, which are really helpful in coating the hair, helping the hair have a lot more shine and protecting it from damage from styling. So yeah, just this assortment of Japanese and Korean hair care, I've been really loving and they just feel nice and they smell great. And my hair is just so soft and nice. Ugh, I live. And I got all those on Yes Style, so I have links for those in the description box. Another product I've really been enjoying is this one from Abib. This is their Okjuk Essence. I bought this on a whim. I've been exploring more Korean skincare and obviously Abib is famous for their sun steak and I saw this essence and I was like, oh yeah, I haven't heard anyone talk about their skincare. Let me try it. This is so interesting to me because this feels like a very rich gel serum. Like this, let me see if I can show you. So this technically is, it's called an essence, but you can see like it's thick. It kind of feels like a gel, but then it like works into the skin very quickly. But on the skin, there's like this pillowiness to it. There's like this body to it that feels like it's more so moisturizing than just hydrating. So I've been really enjoying this being on Tret where my skin just feels very, very parched all the time because it feels like it's doing a little bit more to like help nourish my skin. But I want to know if you have dry skin, if you've tried this or if you have dry skin, please try this and let me know how this feels for you. Because I know for dry skin types, a lot of times serums just aren't cutting it. You would use what I would consider as a light moisturizer as being a serum for you. So this to me like kind of teeters between those two categories. And I just want to know how you feel about it because sometimes I'll just put this on as my last step and I feel fine. And the last product I'm gonna talk about today is from Maturium. It's their encapsulated salicylic acid moisturizer, 0.75%. They came out with a whole acne line to go with this. I've used the whole thing at this point. Like I've been trying it here and there. My thoughts on it, if you want an abridged version, just because I don't know if I want to do a whole review version of it, because if you post anything Maturium related, those comments get so nasty nasty real quick, but the benzoyl peroxide cleanser is nice. I don't see a big difference between that and Pinoxo, for example, in terms of like the organoleptic properties, the way that it feels and it looks because you look at it and it's just a creamy benzoyl peroxide cleanser. There's not a smell to it. I think it has 1% higher concentration than Pinoxo. It's about the same price as Pinoxo, if not more expensive. And the only ingredient I would say is a different is it has aloe in it. So it has like soothing benefits to it. It's nice. The packaging for it, I don't love because every time I go to open it, there's already like a pool of benzoyl peroxide cleanser in the lid that just kind of like sloshes out. But it works and it's nice, I do like it, but I also like Pinoxol and I also like the Cerave one. They came out with a sulfur spot treatment. Love that stuff. Just because it doesn't feel like very dry and chalky and it doesn't smell like a traditional sulfur treatment. So that's really nice. Their serum, it's interesting to me because it's a very watery salicylic acid serum. It's 2% too. But then I see that they have their BHA liquid exfoliants and they are very different textures. So I think it's just a matter of what which one you prefer. The serum they launched with this line specifically, it's very watery, very lightweight 
Like you do not feel it on the skin. And what's interesting is that I feel like EU equivalents of that would have a high percentage of alcohol, for example. This one doesn't. So it's a very elegant formula. But then their BHA liquid exfoliant, which I really love, has more of a texture similar to a Korean essence. It's syrupy, it's hydrating, it feels thicker on the skin, which I prefer that because it's essentially an essence and a treatment in one. So I see it's kind of a redundant launch, but they are very different sensory experiences. But the serum is much smaller in volume, I believe, than the BHA liquid exfoliant. So, and then there's this, which I really like. And for me, what I like is the concept behind it because it's 0.75%. So it's a lower percentage of salicylic acid, very much in vein of like the whole Korean, like 0.5% salicylic acid, which this concentration is still very effective. And what I like about this is the fact that it's not 2% salicylic acid. It's a lower percentage, which allows you to have the potential for everyday use with this with a lower risk of irritation, just because I feel like when you see salicylic acid products, it's at max percentage, 2%. And that's just not necessarily conducive to everyday exfoliation. Something like this is lower percentage. It's going to have a lower risk of irritation. It's also in a different vehicle. I feel like we don't necessarily see a lot of salicylic acid creams and it's like a light cream. Like that works in really nicely, really easily. It's not greasy. And I target this on my oily T area and I feel like it's not like very heavy in that area. One thing I don't love is the smell and I cannot, I can't pick what that smell is. I actually got a sample of this back when they were developing it. When I was in LA, I got to meet Susan and she was like, hey, I want you to try this out. Tell me what you think and I'll tell you what it is afterwards. So this was the last summer. It turns out it was this and the smell exactly the same. And even then I told her, Susan, I hate the smell of this, but it's a very nice texture. And I didn't know it'd be this. I didn't know the concentration of it at the time. This I really like, and they even market it daily acne treatment, moisturizer to clear and prevent blemishes. I believe this is an OTC under the OTC monograph and it is encapsulated. So it will be a little bit more gentle, but I like this kind of approach because when you have treatments like Tret and salicylic acid as drugs, especially when it comes to targeting acne, for those studies, if I'm not mistaken, most if not all those studies show the results with consistent daily usage. And so with having a lower percentage, you're more likely to actually get the results you want that mimic the findings and the results that we see with these kind of ingredients. So yeah, that was my empties, my favorites, and my hate it's for the summer of 2022. I know it's been a minute since I've done one of these. I am super sorry. But let me down below in the comments section. Have you tried any of these? What your thoughts on these are? What were some of your favorites from the summer? And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, notification bell, so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching, guys. Bye.